Welcome. In this short video, I'm going to show you a couple of features of Premiere Pro that really can help a media composer editor get comfortable inside of Premiere using the source monitor. There's a number of differences between the way Premiere and Media Composer work, and sometimes it can be a challenge to kind of shift from one to the other, and I'm hoping in this series we can really help you with that. The thing I want to focus on right now is how the source monitor works, how to get a timeline view of what's loaded up in the source monitor, how to take a chunk of a sequence and actually load that into the source monitor, um, and then just navigate around inside of a Premiere production a little bit. So to get started, I'm inside of Premiere. I'm inside of a particular project within the production that you see over on the left-hand side of the screen. And to start with, I want to actually get into some selects that I've put into a string out. And I'm going to go ahead and load that up in the source monitor. So to do this, to actually get a sequence to not open in the sequence view, all I have to do is drag it and drop it up into the source monitor. And at this point right now, I am looking at a sequence of B-roll clips. These are taken from uh, Adobe Stock. And I now have the ability to start inserting or overwriting this into my edit sequence. Now, if you want to see the actual sequence that's in the source monitor, click on the wrench menu and turn on something called Open Sequence in Timeline. Now by doing this, you're going to see a separate timeline. These will be tabbed uh, in the uh, area where you have your timeline, you have your sequences, and you can see that the regular uh, playhead here has a blue line, while the one in the string out has a red line. That's just kind of a little visual indicator to show that this is what's loaded up in the source monitor. Now, as you click back and forth between these, Premiere doesn't jump automatically back and forth between the uh, source and record timelines. You can do that manually by clicking on this, but there's another key difference in the way Premiere operates, and this is great when you have like larger displays and multiple screens, more, more real estate to uh, store things. You can actually have both displayed simultaneously. To do this, I'm going to take the source monitor sequence and just anywhere along the tab at the top here, I'm just going to grab it, drag it until I see this purple area show up. And then I'm going to go up to the top and just select this top purple area. And now I'll let go of my, uh, let go of my mouse here, let go of the button. And you can see that we now actually have two timelines actually stacked on top of one another. And this is a very common way of working where you can actually see both sequences at the same time, the one in the source monitor and the one in the program monitor. So now as I scrub through this, you can see the various clips. I could start to actually mark an in, mark an out here, um, and then I could select my sequence and I could do things like three point or four point editing by uh, you know, selecting an in point here and then I can pick and choose exactly where and how I'm cutting this in. I can see I'm cutting this into V3 uh, using the source patching option here. And so now when I hit insert or overwrite, it'll drop in that sequence. Now you'll notice that that came in as a nest. That may or may not be what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit command Z. This little button right here, which is the insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips button, say that six times fast. Um, I like to call it the chem roll button. I, I feel comfortable with that terminology. Um, so what this button does is chooses whether what's in the source monitor is cut in as a nest or it's cut in as the individual clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that to turn it off. You can see that my source patching has changed here. I'm just gonna quickly make sure I'm not cutting in any audio. I'm gonna turn off V2 and V3. All I need is V1, and then I'm gonna take V1 and move it up into V3 where I wanna cut in those original sources. I've still got my in and out range selected. I've still got my in point in my edit sequence selected. So now I'm gonna hit overwrite and you can see it's cut in the actual source clip from that selection. Now there's even another way of working which is really kind of, uh, it's fundamentally different from what you can typically do inside of Avid. Because we have both of these sequences 
available to us simultaneously, it's possible for me to just take one of these B-roll clips and I can actually drag it and drop it exactly where I want it on another sequence. You know, it's not taking it out of this sequence, it's basically making a copy, but it's possible to use sequences. And it's one of the reasons why you see a lot of Premiere editors really focus on editing from string outs rather than doing bin organization of various footage because you have this ability to just drag and drop directly from one sequence to another. Um, you know, you can always use insert or overwrite. You can also use copy paste. There's a lot of flexibility in the way that you go about editing things together. Now, I wanna show taking a segment from my color documentary sequence and actually loading that entire area into the source monitor. The default behavior of Premiere Pro is that you can only load individual clips or sequences into the source monitor. And this can be a sticking point for a lot of editors who like to take an entire sequence from, uh, entire section of a sequence and lift that up into the source monitor so that they can insert or overwrite it later. Like moving a scene maybe further along in the movie or bringing it back from you know, one reel into another reel, for example. You can do this in Premiere. It's called something a little unusual, and I wanna bring that up in the keyboard settings here. So we're gonna to go to keyboard shortcuts, and I'm gonna type in the word subsequence, all one word. And you can see that there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that I have assigned here for making something called a subsequence. This is designed to give you that experience of taking a chunk of your timeline and moving it up into the source monitor. Um, Premiere doesn't have the same style clipboard that Avid does, but by doing this, not only does it move it up in the source monitor, it also gives you a bin item that you can go back to and refer to if you need to. If you don't like it, you can just delete it, but uh, it is something that uh, is a side effect of doing this where Premiere actually uses this keyboard shortcut to select a range of clips and load them all in the source monitor like they're a single hole. So you can see here that my keyboard shortcut is Shift U. So I'm gonna come back into my sequence and right at the beginning of this part of the interview here, I wanna mark that as an endpoint. And this whole run right here, I wanna mark this as an out point. I wanna lift this entire thing out of the timeline and move it to the end. So what I'm gonna do here is just make sure as I go through all my different tracks, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, source monitor string out because we're not using that at the moment. You can see that unloaded it from the source monitor. But I'm just gonna make sure that all my targeted, my tracks are targeted here. And I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna hold down the command key and drag up across the video tracks and I'm just gonna make sure that all my audio tracks are selected as well. And I'm just about ready to press Shift U, but I wanna do one thing before I do that. I wanna make sure I don't have any selection in the timeline. The reason for this is Premiere treats a selection, a clip that's been selected as sort of an overwrite from any type of in-out range when you're using keyboard shortcuts. So it's important to deselect everything in the timeline when you're doing this type of track targeted in-out point uh, centric workflows in the Premiere timeline. Now you can always click in this empty space up here to deselect everything, but just know there's also a keyboard shortcut that's available, which is called deselect all. And I oftentimes map this someplace on the function keys, such as up to F12, for example, just so it's somewhere easy for me to just reach up and tap that. Okay, now that I've got this set up, um, I've gone ahead and deselected all. I've just got my in and out range. I've just got my track targeting. I'm going to use that keyboard shortcut for make subsequence, shift U, and you can see this is now loaded up something in the source monitor here. It's this entire range. Now, while I have this range selected, because I'm gonna be moving this to the end of the timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and extract it at the same time here. So I've just 
lifted, I've gotten rid of it. It's extracted out of the existing sequence. The source monitor is the one place that still holds that edit. And if I want to see that in a timeline view, once again, wrench menu, open sequence in timeline. And I can see here is that entire edit here. I'll go ahead and expand that out so that I can see that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my source monitor. I just wanna take this entire range. I don't need to worry about an in and out range for this. I'm just gonna move it to the end of my timeline. I'll hold down the shift key so that it snaps to the end of my timeline. And now at this point, I'll go ahead and hit overwrite. And you can see that that's now been cut in at the end of the sequence. So make subsequence is this option of uh, loading a complex selection in the timeline up into the source monitor. Um, using the wrench menu to open the sequence in the timeline view gives me that ability to uh, uh, actually have a visual display of what is currently in the source monitor if it's beyond a single clip. Um, if it is just a single clip, by the way, that function will be grayed out. Uh, we figure with a single clip, you can rely on the little bar at the bottom of the source monitor. But uh, I hope that these different functions actually help you if you are in the process of learning Premiere Pro to add to your existing Media Composer skills. Thanks for watching.